Do you like our new art? Yes, check out the new art on the wall. It's kind of like, there's a glare from outside. All right, so this gift came from my mother. They are uh, pictures of the Mattapani River where they're currently living. And there you go, and it's in different seasons. So we have fall, summer, and winter. Yes! I do. I just sit on a pillow because Cole is so tall in his manual power chair that I had to get taller. I was like literally down here. We should get a telephone book for you, just like you know we did as kids. I never had to use that. I was tall. Oh wow. I'm just kidding. I was <laughs> I was average. Cole's tall. Cole's six three. Yeah. One thing that kind of bothers me is how I never really like got to take advantage of my height. Yeah. Which is so frustrating. Like, especially when it came to like sports and stuff. Like I would have loved to be 6'3 out on the basketball court versus 5'10. Yeah. Oh man. I know yeah. Cole had, after his accident, Cole had a huge growth spurt. Mm -hmm. So he went from 5'11 to 6'3. Six, six, I know. In oh. the summer. Yeah. I would have been a stud, but alas. Maybe. No. Maybe not. I Maybe know. I would have been all gangly and uncoordinated. <laughs> hey, who knows? Who knows? But man, this week has been so long. My eye has just been constantly watering for like the past two days and I'm not sure why. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. It looks like I'm just crying 24 seven. It's just like tears. I don't know. This, 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 um, de Are you choking too? Yeah, seriously. This tear <laughs> duct is working overtime. For some reason. Are you sad? No, there could be a reason for it. Maybe allergies, yeah. I don't know. Just constantly crying. We we'll need to figure this out. <laughs> we can't have you crying in public all the time. People are gonna be like, what is he doing to her? What is wrong with her? <laughs> I know, it's weird, but this week has been long. Last week has been long. It's been a long few weeks. <laughs> yeah, it has been a long few weeks. And it's been a long 10 years, almost 11 years now mm -hmm. since my injury, which is pretty wild to think about. Yeah. And uh, it got a lot of like conversation started with me and Charisma about mm -hmm. that time of my life and like before my injury as well. And it's weird cause like I go back and like watch videos sometimes seeing myself able-bodied is like a trip. It is a real trip mm -hmm. because like I almost don't even like identify with that person anymore. Does that make sense? No, it does make sense. It's like almost like a different life. And mm -hmm. I talked to a lot of people with spinal cord injuries and like they say the same thing. And Cole's gone on 11 years and he was 16 when he got hurt. So he's getting closer and closer to spending more time in a wheelchair than he did walking. Yeah, that's trippy too. I know. Oh, oh my goodness. I know. You know, I, I find that it kind of manifests itself in different ways with me. One way, I like go to pick something up like off the ground or something, and then my hand will spasm at the same time because I'm like, a, you know, stretching my body in a certain way and it causes a spasm. And I pick it up so easily and put it on my lap. It's almost like hard for me to process. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, that was so easy. And then I'm like, man, it used to be that easy for me all the time. Yeah. That's weird to me. I, know. I don't know why. No, I don't think it's I don't think it's weird. I think it's very normal for mm -hmm. people with like who acquired a disability, who were once able-bodied mm -hmm. and then just become disabled. It's just different. It's a different world. And like yeah. you learn to like appreciate things. I think I sometimes take things for granted. The fact that I can just like quickly get up or quickly like shower or use the bathroom. It's like you learn to like appreciate stuff like that. But I don't think yeah. it's weird. I think it's normal. It's just, I, I yeah. I, you just have your moments. It's just odd to like feel that way. Yeah. I also feel that way like watching sports mm -hmm. on television. I watch what like these guys do. They're professional athletes, so what they're doing is incredible, but I watch it and I'm like, how could anybody ever do that? Like even just making like a simple pass at the basketball. I'm like, man, that must be really hard. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I used to do that all the time, but I, like, I don't even think about it that way anymore. I know. So do you like miss your old self or like your able-bodied, I don't even like saying old self, but do you miss like your able-bodied self before, you know, your injury and like when you think about that whole, like what yeah. feelings come about? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say uh, one thing I miss is like having supreme confidence in like my own ability. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, actually, this is a great question because I was just watching a TV show and in the show, the character was in the water 
Mm-hmm. And they had their foot like wrapped in something that was pulling them underwater. Mm-hmm. And the character in the show was like just trying to get to the surface to get air, right? And that was my natural reaction because like I would be panicking just to get air however I could. But as a swimmer before, I know that my natural reaction would have been just to go underwater and you know, take care of what was on my foot, release it, and then swim to the top because I was so comfortable in water. Mm-hmm. But just watching that show, I was like, get to the top, get to the top. Mm-hmm. And that's like such a little trip in my head that uh, that it's weird. So like, I, I miss being able to like have supreme confidence in my ability mm-hmm. like I did. And also, I don't know why, but I, I liked not having the whole like, having to deal with like disability etiquette thing. Before so like, your injury? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I, I deal with that now. Like, I have this nagging thought of, like, when I meet someone new for the first time, mm-hmm. it's like, what do they think of, like, my disability and my wheelchair? And are they, are, do they have a million questions running through their head? Are yeah. they trying to be, like, extra nice to me or something? Yeah. And that's frustrating. Like, I like being able to just meet someone for the first time and, like, they can only get to know me based off my personality. Well, appearance, too. Yeah. But a personality, you know. Yeah, there's just like, there wasn't something that stood out to them and they like were curious about. Yeah, I feel like whenever like you meet someone Mm -hmm. and and I'm around, I notice that they like say hi to you, but like their mind seems so preoccupied with Mm -hmm. all these questions and like they're looking at Cole's chair, looking at him. And like a lot of times when strangers approach Cole, it is instantly about his disability, whether it's what happened to him, what Mm -hmm. kind of wheelchair are you using? oh nice job for getting out dude or like just random comments like that but like it's rare for someone to approach cole and just say hey how are you i love your shirt man cool classes Uh, like unless i know them if it's a stranger like yeah yeah for sure so if before your accident if you Mm -hmm. never had your accident where do you think you'd be and i know that's such a Mm -hmm. hard question to answer but like if you could answer it where do you think you would be at 26 Seven. Yes. At 27 years old. Uh, Stop. Um, you know, frankly, I feel like I'd be working some like common kind of job and living for the weekends. I don't know. I, I don't think that I would be doing like something exciting. I think I'd still be in Virginia in my hometown. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I would be doing. I mean, I, I had ambitions to go to pharmacy school until I hit physics and inorganic chemistry, and then I dropped those. You probably Um, would have still done that regardless of your disability though. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, probably. I would have probably played sports, maybe get into that world. But the thing is like, I was so early that like nobody, no 16 year old knows where they're going. No. But yeah, I, I I don't really know. And in that way, I mean, what I do know is that this is a much better version of me than it would have been. Mm -hmm. I would have just been an average dude, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And not saying that I'm not average, but I feel like I've had an opportunity to like do bigger things. Yeah, make a difference in the world. Yeah. Really, really try to make a difference and change things. Mm -hmm. You would probably just been going with the everyday flow of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think that's where most people go towards. I think now we're making a transition, especially with Mm -hmm. our generation, where we're going more towards the entrepreneurial, Mm -hmm. entrepreneur, uh, influencer, social media, having your own business type lives. Cause like, mm-hmm. I think, I don't think our generation really likes to work nine to five. Like that's just no. not ingrained in our generation, especially no. the generation after us. I'm curious, do you feel a sense of loss for the person you were? Or do you feel like you've become who you hoped you'd become so you're happy? I feel like I've become who I hope I've become. Well, that makes sense, you're on track. Yeah, no, you have to answer that question. I think that question is gonna be, the answer will be more impactful coming from you than me. <laughs> yeah, well, I definitely feel a sense of loss. Yeah. You know, I miss a lot of things about being able-bodied, you know, and like that was such a, that's such like a monumental and like foundational time of your life, I think, your mm-hmm. like teenage years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think like becoming paralyzed as a 16 year old and still having some teenage years, like there was like that sense of loss grew a lot and it's hard to like let that go because like I was watching all my friends doing the things that I wanted to be doing, mm-hmm. you know? Now that's not to say like, I'm not extremely happy and proud of who I am today. I love where I am, but yeah, I do feel like there's, like I lost someone and it's almost like I have to mourn them. And just like go through grief for myself. Is that weird? No, I think that's the right word mourn. 
hundred yeah. percent grief. I think everyone yeah. with a spinal cord injury have to, they all have to grieve their previous life mm -hmm. because you have a new life. Like things are never going to be the same, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think everyone goes through a sense of grief and loss after a spinal cord injury. And I think not mm -hmm. only does the individual go through that, everyone that that person knew goes through that yeah. as well. Yeah, that's such a weird part of a spinal cord injury. I think my dad especially felt this is like, you know, he had so many ideas for a future with his son, like mm -hmm. his son going to college or playing sports and like growing up and going golfing together and, you know, riding snowmobile, like, you know, I'm just making up random things, but I feel like my dad like really struggled with it because, you know, he felt like he lost his son in a way. Of course he didn't, I'm still here and we still do things and we've discovered lots of ways to have fun and you know, bond, but, mm -hmm. and my mom too, same thing. And Quint losing like a brother mm -hmm. in a way. So it's almost like someone died, but obviously they're not dead. It's like, it's a trip. It is a trip. It's a very unique experience that only people who have gone through that can truly understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a trippy experience. Mm -hmm. I don't know why these thoughts have been, you know, on my mind recently. Um, sometimes this happens where I just like, you know, get real nostalgic and start, yeah. You know, thinking about life, getting all metaphysical and yeah. all that. I think it's because we're thinking about the next next stage in our lives. And I think we're mm -hmm. thinking about just the future. And then also you're two months away from your anniversary. So it's like mm -hmm. all these memories and emotions are just happening right now just because of where we are in our lives. So mm -hmm. I think that's why I think it's natural. Yeah. I used to not really think about much on my anniversary, but now, now I think about it more. Because I think every year I go, the more I accomplish, the more proud I am, and mm -hmm. the more I can recognize like how hard it was. Yeah. And that, uh, yeah. Aww. You've come a long way, babe. Yeah. <laughs> that's so long. Yeah. See, the old me would never cry, so. <laughs> really? Yeah, so that's a <laughs> totally new person. Yeah, the because you're crying, yeah. yeah. It's okay to be emotional. I like that Cole's emotional. Sometimes he almost makes me cry. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too hardcore to cry. Yeah. Except I am crying because it's I, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're overactive tear ducks. I know. <laughs> no, I love that Like you can talk about it and be like emotional. Let me get, um, let me get yours. Come here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, I love that you can like talk about it and show your true emotion. Cause I think that okay to still like hurt. I think it's okay to still mourn like your old self. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's okay to have tough days. And I don't want people to think that Cole is like 100% happy. Everything is perfect. Just because we, our motto is stay positive doesn't mean that we don't have down days. Like mm. we, you have to experience and acknowledge those feelings. Because if you keep hold, holding them in, if you keep them bottled in, then it just only makes things worse. It only makes you more miserable. So we always advocate for expressing yourself and feeling those negative feelings because that is just as important as the positive feelings. Yeah, someone else I also grieve for is the Cole right after my injury who didn't feel like he could like really have all those feelings who didn't really feel like he could go to school and be all mopey and depressed because all of his friends would leave him. But I tried to, you know, fake it till I made it. Kind of worked. But yeah. that shouldn't be the case, you know. I think it would have been much healthier for me. It wouldn't have taken me years to finally be happy if I just allowed myself to process all that and mourn for yeah. myself. Yeah. There's no need to fake happiness. Like, because when you say fake it till you make it, it's almost the idea of like having those negative feelings is bad. Like it's not bad to mourn. It's not bad to be sad. Like it's okay. Yeah. So when you say fake it till you make it, you're like, oh, pretend you're happy and then you eventually be happy. But it's like, no, be sad, be hurt, <laughs> be emotional, grieve those feelings, have those feelings, and then work your way to becoming the person you want to be instead of Putting, you know, brushing those feelings under the rugs because then that's worse. Right. Feel those emotions, people. Yeah, get them out. <laughs> but yeah, this was just on our minds. Felt like, you know, it was worth talking about because, mm -hmm. you know, lots of people are going through similar things. Mm -hmm. And it's not just spinal cord injury. You know, it's all sorts of things can happen that sort of like, you know, completely change you and you have to evolve and you feel like you lose yourself. You lose your old self. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> We think it's important to like take the time and it's okay to grieve 
Um, even if it's like you don't actually lose a, someone, you lose something, it's okay to grieve no matter what it is. And it's important to grieve. Now, especially, I think we, we're talking about it now, is because most spinal cord injuries happen during the summertime. Sadly, this is the time of the year where we get so many emails about someone who just had a spinal cord injury and yeah. they're going through a lot. So I think that's why it's on our mind as well. Probably. Anyways, I hope anybody out there who's going through something like this is handling it well. I hope you're processing the, all these emotions. Know that you're not alone. There are others who have felt that and are feeling that too. So I hope you find some community and some anti-loneliness, whatever that word is, with, with community us. Community and some uh, community. Support. Support. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you all for watching. Yes, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, feel those emotions, and, and stay, stay positive. positive. Was that good? <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> Did you? Peace.